span of approximately 15 years, Over the Rhine adopted two different urban renewal plans, the Over the Rhine Comprehensive Plan and the 2002 OTR Comprehensive Plan. The adoption of the two different plans was due to the fact the neighborhood was designated blight. These plans had different goals due to different historic events that took place within the neighborhood in the city of Cincinnati. Leading up to the 1985 plan, the Great Depression caused American-born African Americans and Appalachian immigrants to move in from the South and inhabit the Cincinnati area. More specifically, African Americans moved into neighborhoods on the east and west ends of the city, while the Appalachian immigrants moved into OTR. These two groups of people moved to Cincinnati for the industrial work. There was a change in demographics in OTR because of changing transportation. The construction of Interstates 71 and 75, located on the east and west side of the city, allowed for those who could afford it to move out of the city and into surrounding neighborhoods. Since African Americans were living on the east and west sides, they were forced to displace toward the center of the city and into OTR. Because the African American families were poor, they were left to live in unsafe and unsanitary conditions. Since living conditions were unsatisfactory, reformers started remodeling historical buildings by ripping out the interior and turning them into apartments. The reformers wanted to make affordable buildings that were energy efficient and easier to clean. Now that mainly underprivileged African Americans were living in OTR, most of the housing became Section 8 housing. This area was soon designated as blight because it became a low-income racial enclave and it was losing its historical value. Not only was Over the Rhine experiencing Section 8 housing, but other concerns the neighborhood had were piecemeal planning of business, commercial and residential developments which threatened to have a divisive effect of the future of OTR, and wanton demolitions of structurally sound and potentially usable housing stock. These concerns led to the City of Cincinnati adopting the 1985 Comprehensive Plan. The plan was prepared by the City Planning Department and Over the Rhine Planning Task Force. Some of the projects that Cincinnati developed were construction of infill housing, avoiding gentrification, rehabilitation of housing stock, using ground level for storefront and upper levels for residential use, and off-street parking on centralized lots or parking structures. In addition, the renewal plan wanted to provide decent and diverse housing opportunities for all people who live in OTR. The implementation and approval of the 1985 Urban Renewal Plan and the 2002 Comprehensive Plan were the same. In order for the implementation of both plans, it was proposed by the City Planning Department staff for the plans to be approved by the City Planning Commission and adopted by the City Council. While the implementation process was the same for both plans, what led to the neighborhood being designated as blight was different. As previously described, in 1985, the neighborhood was considered blight due to the underprivileged African American families moving into OTR, which caused housing to become Section 8 with lost historical value. Rather than unsatisfactory living conditions, the reason for the second comprehensive plan was due to the vacancy and damage done to the buildings as a result from riots that took place. As the 1985 plan progressed, the community started to change. Citizens were excited about the revitalization of the area. They were eager to see their neighborhood become an entertainment district. Residents also came together and created the Over the Rhine Foundation. Some of the most predominant work done by the foundation was revitalizing and preserving the historic German and Italian architecture. As things started to look up for this community, it soon took a turn. In 2001, riots erupted after an unarmed black teenager named Timothy Thomas was fatally shot by a white officer. The riots were the largest disturbance in the U.S. since the riots of Rodney King in 1992. During an early morning in April of 2001, Timothy Thomas led two Cincinnati police on a chase. When officer Steve Roach heard Thomas had 14 warrants out for his arrest, he joined the pursuit. Coming face-to-face -face with Thomas, Roach fatally shot him in the chest. An estimated 200 protesters gathered outside City Hall, while another several hundred gathered outside the police department. The protesters led a march starting in OTR. During the march, the protesters caused disturbances such as throwing bottles and trash at police officers, smashing windows, and beating white motorists. 
More riots broke out on the dates of April 11th and 12th. Looting and vandalism caused damage to more businesses. The effects of the riots were so extreme, there were millions of dollars in damage done to the 120 businesses and public buildings. Additionally, they caused the 1985 plan to come to a halt. The damages done were the reason the neighborhood was dubbed as a ghetto. After the riots, a wave of people wanted to move their residential lives and businesses out of the neighborhood. This wave led to 500 of the neighborhood's 1,200 buildings vacant. Once again, the neighborhood was designated blight. Because of the events that took place and the damage done to the buildings, Cincinnati proposed a new conference of plan in June of 2002. The newest conference of plan focused on different projects in the 1985 plan. Phase 1 committed projects focused on housing recommendations, economic development, safety and cleanliness, transportation, and quality of life. These plans were scheduled to be completed by the end of 2004. With Cincinnati being Ohio's third largest city, many of the corporations located downtown were fearful the negative events happening in OTR would drag down adjacent neighborhoods. These corporations, including Kroger, Macy's, and Procter & Gamble, gave money to the 3CDC, a not-for-profit real estate company, to repurpose the buildings and lots that were left vacant after the riots. This agency was also given the ability to pick the tenants running the buildings. Since there are strict pickings of renters, the neighborhood is starting to revive itself again. Many different shops have moved in, and what was once a major beer-making district before the Prohibition is starting to see the rebirth of many major breweries, some of which include Rheingeist and the Adams Family Facility nearby. With the revitalization of the neighborhood comes many different opinions from the residents. When community members were asked what their neighborhood would look like in 15 years, some residents say over the rent's growth won't be able to sustain itself. Others say development and gentrification will completely take over the neighborhood, making it completely unrecognizable. And yet, others say over the Rhine is already a vibrant, diverse neighborhood. When African American residents were asked for their opinion of the changing neighborhood, it was found that many felt unwelcomed and invisible. They say Over the Rhine does not feel like a community anymore, but rather than an entertainment district and tourist destination. Regardless of these contradictory opinions, one common theme emerges, a profound love for the community. Even though there have been many improvements to the area, there still needs to be an increase in safety around OTR and the West End. In order to take control of the violence around OTR, Cincinnati police are working with the DEA, FBI, ATF, and the U.S. Attorney's Office. By working with these agencies, Cincinnati hopes to cut down on gun violence. In order for the police to terminate these problems, they will be focusing on removing illegal drugs, prosecuting gang members, unsolved homicides and armed robberies, and be on the lookout for offenders of federal gun laws. In the last 35 years, Over the Rhine has adopted two commons of plans that have different goals and projects within the same boundaries. While the 1985 plan started to revitalize the neighborhood, the 2001 riots left the neighborhood once again blighted. Since the 2002 commons of plan, the safety of some areas still needs improved, but the love for the community is still there and the neighborhood is now a thriving entertainment destination.